The state of Florida adopted oral language as a major component of reading some time ago. We are going to learn more about that now. There are four language systems having to do with oral language. It's the phonological or sound system. We learned about that in emergent literacy and phonological awareness. The syntactic or structural system, the semantic or meaning system, and the pragmatic or social and cultural use system. As I said, we learned about the phonological system earlier in the course. However, just to review that it's the study of how sounds are organized and used in our language. The syntactic system has to do with the organization of English. So this is really the way sentences are put together. Uh, my example of Yoda should help you out. It, hopefully you at least know who he is. We would say, I will learn English. Yoda says, learn English, I will. So the syntax of that sentence is very different. We see this in our young Spanish speaking students because Spanish is organized syntactically a little different. Their adjectives come after the nouns and our adjectives in English come before the nouns. The semantic system is the meaning system and vocabulary is the key component of this system. Unfortunately, we would think that all kindergartners start with the same amount of vocabulary and understanding, but they don't. There are various levels depending upon their background knowledge and how much exposure they've had in the area of emergent literacy. The pragmatic system deals with the social and cultural aspects of language. So knowing that language varies according to the purpose of what you're speaking or writing for, the audience, various dialects, and the cultural communities of where you are. There are five components of effective oral language instruction. Now I've included this entire document in the syllabus, uh, there's a link for it. You will want to go and spend some time in this in order to understand these five components carefully. But they, the components are to promote auditory memory, teach and extend vocabulary and conceptual knowledge, create a language learning environment, teach a variety of spoken texts, and develop listening and speaking skills. I'm only going to cover developing listening and speaking skills in depth in this presentation. Now let's look at listening and speaking. So what is the difference between listening and hearing? If you've been around students for very long, you know right away. They can look like they hear you, but listening has to do with something else. It's actually comprehending and responding to what is being said. So step one is receiving or hearing, step two is understanding, and step three is assigning, assigning meaning. So why should we teach our students to listen? Well, they do that most of the time, or we want them to do that most of the time. And children are introduced to written language by listening to stories, so it's, it's a, something that they do or have done in school for a while, but many of them don't know how to listen most effectively to learn. Here is a graph, not a great graph. I would like to see this graph change, but this is how a lot of classrooms are structured. At least 50% of the time, the students are just asked to listen. I would like to see it increase where reading, writing, and talking become a bigger part and listening is smaller although listening to each other is very valuable. There are four main purposes for listening, especially in the classroom. Discriminative, aesthetic, efferent, and critical. So let's take a look at each one of those. Discriminative listening really has to do with kind of learning how words are put together and learning how language works. So examples would be 
the phonemic awareness activities, rhyming words, alliteration, onomatopoeia, strategies that we might use in the classroom. You can see those. I would think that these are probably used in the younger grades and with students that struggle with language. And it could be students with special needs that do struggle with language, especially with noticing verbal and nonverbal cues. Aesthetic listening is more about enjoyment. When we listen for aesthetic reasons, um, we typically are listening to stories or poems or watching a video or a movie, something like that. And we're using our skills and strategies such as predicting, visualizing, connecting, and summarizing. Efferent listening is very different. Efferent listening is listening to learn. So we are might be listening to informational books or videos that are informational uh, to a set of directions that a teacher is giving, uh, to a lesson or a mini lesson the teacher is doing, or listening to another student talk about a graphic organizer. And we would use such strategies as organizing, recognizing big ideas, questioning, and summarizing. The final one is critical listening. And here, examples of those are listening to speeches or debates, commercials, or advertisements. They really make us make decisions. So we are evaluating when we are critically listening. We're listening for point of views. We're listening to see if we're trying to be persuaded to do something or if we have to draw a conclusion. We have to seek opportunities to give our students ways to practice listening in the classroom and teach them that there are different ways that we approach that. A simple elementary example is when you are reading aloud a story in the classroom. If it's a fictional story that's just for enjoyment like after lunch, I usually let my students draw a picture or do something that they like to do at their seat or maybe sit somewhere else. But if I'm reading something informational or we're watching um, a movie that's informational or I'm giving a mini lesson, I teach them to listen very differently. I don't want distractions on their desk. I want them to be tuned in. We have to make those distinctions with our students. Also, what opportunities are we giving our students to speak in class? Are we allowing, allowing them to have small group discussions, partner discussions? Are we allowing them to give presentations in class and allowing them to listen to others give presentations? Think about how doing these things connect to reading comprehension. The best example I can give of that are book clubs or literature circles or just discussing reading. When we read something or ask our students to read something in class and understand it, one of the best things that we can do after that reading takes place is to have a rich discussion, allow students to speak and listen that will help them with their reading comprehension. Continue to learn about oral language through the documents that I provided in the syllabus.